I guess the I mean, I guess the only other one that I would probably bring up now, um, I th- remember it was like the law of Demeter that I, we saw getting uh, um it's the getting perfect abused. example right there. Yeah. yeah. So law of Demeter is you should um I forgot the exact definition. It's it's basically like you should know about your uh friends and not your neighbors or something. I forgot that there's like a fancy name for it. Uh, either way, the yeah, actual yeah. the actual principle is uh, you only need to know about the things you're calling. So, for example, current controller interacts with the current player. But right now, there's secretly an awful lot of information being leaked mm-hmm. by this line of code, which, without even thinking about it, we're able to say we know that a turn controller exists. A turn controller uses a player via using a character to update movement using this information. So there's so much information leaked there, where if you decide to change it and turn the current player into a car, which, (laughs) for whatever reason, you can't do that without... because you're exposing the fact that it's using this character object. If you decide to change how character is implemented, you can't do that because you've leaked that knowledge to everybody else. So realistically, this class should be updating movement. So you should say, current controller dot update movement, and maybe pass in a player, or just leave it to him to figure out whoever the current player is. Either way, you don't, you shouldn't be ex- passing children of children of children through your application. I'm trying to do this real quick. Update player movement. Yeah, and uh, we'll, we'll do a quick and dirty one. There's, there's, there's other ways I'd do it, but I'd Plenty say just of... now, just do it, just even that's perfectly fine, and just take in the uh, tile information. Yeah, and then, so what was it? Uh, X, Y, X, Y, and tile? tile. I usually just F12 into it and then copy the uh, contract for the function. That's way smarter than what I was doing. <laughs> uh, making me nervous, guys. <laughs> Never judge a program or programming live, guys. If you unless know, you try to, on, you know, it's a very uh, stressful experience. What's happening here? All right. <laughs> all There's right. a reason why I get to sit here calmly and let Charles do all the work because I don't have to panic. <laughs> uh, so yeah. here, so, so now, here, yeah, basically we can we'll simplify just... all of this by clearing both of those words. Boom. I think I called it update character or okay. player movement or something. I've come up with a better name, but yeah. Oh, it expects a return value. Oh yeah. Also, that's it. Like we'll, we'll actually get to that in a second. Oh boy. Um, and for now, I'm just gonna return. Yeah. I'm sure I could just call the thing, but just for Don't the forget. sake of me. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, fine. We'll just. I'll, I'll do it later. Yeah. Well, you get the idea. So, so that's one thing. So now we, we've basically. Uh, removed one layer of knowledge from two scripts, which means it may seem like the same thing. It may be subtly, hang on a second, should the turn controller handle player movement? Well, yeah, that's what he's doing, right? He's controlling the turns. You you could theoretically call uh, turn controller dot update movement and pass in a player. That's another option if you wanted to do it that route. But either way, the point is, you shouldn't be exposing how turn controller does his job. There's no point in making a class called turn controller to do the turn controller work if you're going to leak how he does his job anyway. The point of that abstraction is to say, I don't want to deal with the implications of how this works. I just want to let someone else do this job. And so if you're ever calling dot something, dot something, dot something, you're giving away how everything's made, and you should have a function that just is something dot do something. When it goes update path. I was going to do the same thing because this this other line breaks the law of Demeter as well. So the same idea, we're going to take this code and uh, we'll drop it in there, and that way you're just saying, hey, I'm updating the player movement, and I'm updating the path. And even separately, it just makes things smaller. Like, you can do the same thing, because that's actually the same function. You look at line 145. Like, you've already written it. That's the update oh, player. Right. Oh, You can see how this is sort of yeah, uh, I get you. simplifying stuff. Um, yeah. Now, so. one other thing as well brings up a good point, because you caught us both off guard there. We didn't realize it returned a boolean. Mm-hmm. Uh, because there is a general idea of side effects when you're writing functions, and it basically boils down to mm. how do I phrase this? Uh, so it's commonly applied in databases, and it's called command query separation. And effectively, it means uh, functions do two things: you're either getting information or you're executing some command. Uh, in this case, you are doing a command, updating the player movement, and then you're potentially getting information back. So this is giving us back true or false. But that doesn't tell us anything. That says, so for example, if I get true back from update player movement, is that telling me the player movement happened? 
the player was able to move, the player moved the appropriate tile, or is it that player movement was received but decided not to move? That true doesn't tell me anything. It just tells me, okay, true, good, for some reason. And if I get false back, does that mean there was an error in moving? Does it mean that I wasn't allowed to move this frame? That's not any information. So usually you would split that up into your command and your query. Your command would be update player movement. And in the next line, you might say if player at tile position. That way you check, did you do the, do the move? Check if the move was successful. There are two separate entire concerns, and it's it's logically confusing to return a boolean um, from a function that that doesn't have some uh, clear distinction of being a query. And a good indicator of this is if you can't write is in front of your method name, you probably shouldn't be returning a boolean from it. Hmm. So is update player movement doesn't make any sense, does it? But is at correct tile is uh, arriving at destination is able to move. These are all Boolean checks. They are your queries. They are not your command. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, it, we, we just saw it live how confusing that was. So. Yeah.